Hello everybody and welcome to another Andy's Workshop video. In this video I'm going to introduce you to my graphics coprocessor project. Now the graphics coprocessor board is designed to fit on top of the Arduino R3 and provide graphics um, coprocessing um, abilities for it. Now the reason for doing this is that graphics um, processing is typically quite heavy on, on a CPU's ability and the, um, the Arduino is not very well endowed with CPU power, memory, stuff like that. Basically it's only a 16 megahertz MCU and it's only got 32k of flash memory and only 2k of static RAM. So it makes sense to offload the, the, the burden of um, doing graphics operations to a separate processor and this, that's what this project does. Now you can see the full write-up for this project on my website. Um, click here on this link here and you, it will be taken to my website where you can view the entire project documentation. All of the source code for this project and all of the Gerbers for the PCBs if you want to build your own are all available for my website. Basically the whole thing is open source and I do encourage you to build this project yourself. And here's how it all starts out. This is the blank PCB for the design. The kind of thing that you'll receive if you order your own PCBs. Now I got this printed in black, which uh, which looks particularly good when an LCD is mounted upon it, but it has drawbacks in that you, you, you just can't see what's going on, on on the board in terms of where the traces go, the contrast just isn't high enough. Um, <clears throat> now the actual layout of the PCB is designed to fit on top of the Arduino, like so. All of the um, pins are broken out there so that um, you don't lose any. And the cutouts are designed to um, fit just where the USB port and the power connector are on the Arduino. This board is a normal two-layer board, which is um, easy, easily printed by one of the online um, online bureaus, such as Seed Studios, IT Studios. So the one I use is Elecro, Elecro.com. Um, I use them really because I've had some good service from them in the past when I cocked up a design and they and they held it from production while I fixed it and emailed them a fixed um, a fixed design for for them. And I was particularly pleased with that, especially considering how cheap the service is. So I, I continue to use them now. Um, this is, so as I said, basic two-layer board. Um, all of the components are on the top there. Um, there's, on the bottom, it's basically just routing and uh, a ground plane fill. Now, because the, um, the, the, this, this coprocessor uses such a large LCD, um, all of the components actually have to be um, nudged up, up the top there. So this, this shield does overhang the Arduino at the top there, you can see, by, by, about, another, by about the same width as the Arduino itself. This Arduino clone that I got on eBay um, is, I got it because it's it's coloured black PCB. I like black to go with the black uh, board that I'm creating. It looks good. But um, it, it's also extremely important that it's the R3 version of the Arduino Uno because the SCL and SDA pins up there are vital to this design. They are required for communication between the Arduino and the, um, the graphics coprocessor. Now, the end result of using the, the I2C bus that is provided by these two pins is that the graphics coprocessor uses no pins at all on the Arduino. Every single pin is available for you to continue to use in your design. That's a significant sort of advantage over the graphics um, boards that you often see presented as shields for the Arduino because they just gobble up so many pins that you're hardly left with anything, anything for your design. Not to mention the size of the actual library that's needed to drive them. They tend to occupy more than half of your available flash space. So let's let's see this thing mounted first. Okay, so the idea is the the uh, coprocessor board just presses down. If I can do this on the video here, I can see it. Right. Mates with the pins. This is kind of hard to do under the camera. Ah, I got it. And we press down gently and it fits nicely. It fits nice and snugly on top of the board. Naturally, if you've got other shields in play in your design, this will be the top one. Obviously, it's the LCD, it needs to be on top. And it also means that I don't have to worry about exposing um, the pins from, from the Arduino directly upwards for other shields to uh, mate against. But just in case that you need to get to all of your pins, I've broken out all of them down this header down here, the whole lot are here, plus a few extra ones as a, as a, as a bonus. Basically you've got the 2.8 volt output from the LCD there if you need a 2.8 supply and, and three ground pins. You can never have too many ground pins. 
Okay, let's take a quick whistle stop tour of the board just to see the main features on there and see what, and introduce you to what they actually do. So, first of all, we have the uh, pin header down the side here. These are all the pins um, from the Arduino broken out for, for your own use within the new project, plus a couple of extras, including the 2.8 volts um, supply that this entire board runs on. Now, moving up here, we've got the, the reset button. The reset button resets only the STM32 on here. It doesn't reset the Arduino. Um, if I were to design this again, I would probably link the, this reset to the Arduino as well, so they both, re both reset simultaneously. It's quite important that they do reset together because you can get out of sync otherwise. Now, the ICSP header here is the one that you know from the Arduino. It's just broken out here so that you can use it if you need it. The header here is the, the SWD header is for programming the STM32. Um, if you decide to develop custom firmware, then you would need to use this header to connect to the, your ST-Link debugger. And you just hook these pins up to it and you can program the um, MCU on this board. <coughs> now here we have two LEDs, busy and full. The busy LCD is used to indicate that commands are coming in from the Arduino. Um, it just indicates activity. Now the full LED is used to indicate uh, a problem basically, it means there is um, more data coming in from the Arduino than the STM32 can handle. I've implemented a circular buffer inside the STM32 to handle um, to buffer commands as soon as they come in and the STM32 empties them as soon as it can. Um, but if this buffer should fill, then the full light will light up. This doesn't, this doesn't mean commands are lost, basically when the buffer is full the STM32 will suspend the I2C bus so that further commands um, are held up waiting for the buffer to, to drain. It's actually, unless you're doing uh, you know, graphics, JPEGs and things, it's actually quite hard to, for the Arduino to fill the um, STM32's buffer because the STM32 is, is considerably faster than, than the Arduino, especially when I've overclocked it. Now, down here, this, jumper, this pair of jumpers here, is um, is linked to the, the two um, pull-up resistors that you need on the I2C bus. Now you need one set of these resistors per bus, so if you've got another device that's doing I2C and it's got, it's, it's got uh, you know, hard wiring to the, um, to, to the I2C uh, pull-ups, then these jumpers should be removed so that you don't end up with two pull-ups on the same bus. Now up here, we've got the uh, boost converter that provides the backlight for the LCD. Um, the backlight requires, well, I think it's six LEDs in in, sequ in, um, in series. So to provide enough forward voltage to light the um, LEDs that, that, that provide the backlight, you need a boost converter. Now there are special boost converters designed for lighting LED strings, and that's what this is. It's, the, it's a diode zinc AP5724. You can see it in the, in the, um, in the write-up. Basically, it just it boosts the voltage up to um, enough to light the, the to light the LEDs, and then a feedback resistor is used this one here, R7, um, to ensure that the current that this constant current generator provides doesn't exceed 20 milliamps. Now the little IC we've got down here is the power supply um, for the entire board. It's a 2.8 volt regulator. It runs um, off the, I, I connect it to the uh, 5 volt line input and it provides 2.8 volts output. Here is the coprocessor itself. It's an STM32 F051, um, the ARM Cortex M0 core. It's, um, st right, in standard mode, it runs at 48 megahertz. It's got um, 64K of flash and 8K of RAM, which is plenty for uh, providing all the graphics routines and even doing um, JPEG decoding. Now, I actually uh, overclocked this, as you'll see in the article, to 64 megahertz, so I can get the absolute maximum out of the LCD. Um, you can see from the other videos in this sequence how, how well that works. Now, last of the components up here is this up here. It's a 16 megabit flash IC. Um, it's, to, it's used to um, store graphics bitmaps for fast access uh, so that you can, you can display them quickly on the LCD. It's linked by the SPI bus to the STM32 here. And um, my firmware uses DMA access to get the graphics out of here so that they arrive as fast as possible and can be pushed out to the LCD at the maximum possible speed. Okay, so now we've seen the um, an overview of the board, let's have a look at it running um, some software. Okay, we're off. So I've plugged in the uh, USB cable to provide power. The Arduino firmware has already been loaded up with my graphics library demo, and I'm running the overclocked version of the STM32 firmware. 
I'll just, you can't see this, I'm just going to reach behind me and plug in the uh, USB um, cable to the computer, which will provide power and boot the thing up. Here it comes. The Arduino takes a while to start up because of its bootloader check. And there we go. We're going to see a JPEG first. There you go, JPEG's loaded up and um, demonstrated on screen. I'm not going to go through this entire demo because you can see it in one of my other videos on YouTube. Um, I'll just, just point out, you can see as, as the graphics demo runs, the LEDs up here are, are lighting to indicate progress, so I'll just focus in on those. As you can see, the, uh, the busy LED is, is going like going mad there because the graphics are being pushed out at a high speed. And occasionally the full, um, the full LED blinks to indicate that the circular buffer has filled and it's, it's waiting for the STM32 to clear a bit of space before it can fill it in. And the demo just runs on at high speed. Of course, one, one uh, side effect of, of the way this is done, the way the buffering of the commands and the execution when the STM32 is ready, is that the, um, the whole of the thing runs asynchronously to, Ardu to the Arduino. If you send a command to uh, load, a, you know, load a JPEG from Flash or to uh, print a string like that last demo was doing, or draw lines like this, the, the Arduino will, um, will, will gain control back from the command send as soon as the command has been received and buffered by the STM32. There's no, there's no delay waiting for the um, command to execute. It ha the, the commands execute asynchronously. This gives more, more power and more availability of your Arduino's MCU while the STM32 is doing its job of offloading the graphics. As you can see, the thing is pretty fast. Well, it's as fast as you can possibly get given the, uh, the 64 megahertz speed of the overclocked STM32. Shall I let one more run? Yeah, let's see one more. Just the basic colours. These are this is fill the fill speed is, is pretty much instantaneous. You can even see the beam cutting through the, the, the thing there as it clears the screen. And there's a load of lines drawing. Okay, so I'm going to cut the demo off here because you can go in, if you want to see the full uh, graphics library demo. It's available on YouTube, and I do encourage you to watch it. I hope you've oh, I hope you've enjoyed this um, walk walk through and, um, and and explanation of how the board works. Please do visit the website, have a look at the uh, the write up, and and go ahead and make your own. It's a really easy PCB to build. There's nothing complicated on here at all. If you can do basic surface mounts um, work, then you should be able to handle this project. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed. Goodbye.